Hello everybody and welcome back to another Strixhaven Modern gameplay video. Today we are playing a green-white Shale Dean of Radiance Hardened Scales deck, or a deck I like to call She Sells Shale Scales. Good thing I didn't mess that up on the first try. So Shale is basically another copy of Steel Overseer, except for any creature, not just artifact creatures. She pumps up creatures that enter the battlefield. So if you happen to be new to modern and don't know what Hardened Scales is, it is a one mana green enchantment that says if a creature would get a counter, it gets an additional counter. And then we have another creature called Conclave Mentor, which does the same thing as Hardened Scales, but on a body. So double the amount of double the counters with Shale and Hardened Scales effect. Basically, whenever a creature enters on our side, Shale's gonna double its power immediately, which can get nuts with things like Walking Ballista and such. Although, just letting you guys know, this is not the typical artifacty, Ozolith, Arcbound Ravager, Constructs version of Hardened Scales. This is just green, white, happens to have one, one counter stuff. There's Ballista and Hangerback Walker in here, but it's not specifically a Constructs deck. But you never know, what if Shale is super good to the point where people start putting her in those uh, Steel Overseer-like artifacty decks. Um, so yeah, let's give her a nice little test and see if she's worth it. And before we get into it, a huge thanks to all of our supporters over on Patreon for making this channel possible. Their names have been scrolling down below. And if you would like to help monetize this channel so I can keep doing this kind of content, you can find the Patreon link down below in the description. But if you'd like to show your support for free, leaving a like, comment, and subscribe is very much appreciated. And be sure to check out our sponsors, TCG Player and Mana Traders, for all of your Magic the Gathering needs. For the best in MTG and MTG accessories, check out TCGPlayer.com through our deck list link down below. Anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. And if you want to play some Magic online, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code that's on screen right now to save 15% and you can rent and play all the Magic decks you want. And would you like a fully customizable play mat and card sleeves using an art of your own? Check out YourPlayMat.com using the code Marin10YP to save 10%, link down below. And with that, let's get on to the video. Hope you enjoy. All right, we are live here on twitch.tv slash mavendragon. Link is down below. We usually do our streams on Mondays, so come out on a future Monday if you want to catch the gameplay live before the people on YouTube get to see it. You can even play against me if you like. I welcome that as well. This is Green White Shell Scales, freshly rented out, courtesy of Mana Traders. All right. She sells sales, shale scales. She sells shale scales. 22 land deck, a couple can a few canopy lands in there for tech land where we're born to get some graft counters. Uh, a few pathway lands, just a bunch of green white, typical green white mana base. All right, so hardened scales and conclave mentor, those are hardened scales effects to double our counters. Shale is our steel overseer of choice. We got a few artifact creatures, but no steel overseer because we don't have enough artifact creatures. Technically, we do because we also get animation module to make servo tokens whenever we get counters and pay one. Uh, Stone Cold Serpent is just as big as we want it to be. You know, X-Bell, typical. Um, Hangerback Walker. It just gives us a little bit of resilience in the deck because if the opponent wants to kill it, we make a bunch of Thopter tokens. Um, Walking Ballista is just a busted card. If we put a bunch of counters on this, it'll just be stupid um, because we can start shooting stuff. Noble Hierarch. Um, we got a little bit of ramp in Noble Hierarch because I felt like this deck needed a little bit of acceleration. Usually decks like this run 24 lands. Instead, we're going 22 plus Nobles. So it's a different take, but we're going to see if that works because we can also put counters on the Noble at some point if we need to. Luminarch Aspirant, of course, this is like one of the new, more good 1-1 counter cards. Just at your combat step, you just put a counter on something straight up. So if we just play the Ballista, we'll just start charging that up. And uh, yeah, that's basically it for the main deck. Onto the sideboard, we got Deafening Silence for Storm, Rip for the Grave, Core Firewalker for, um, you know, Blitz and Burn. Uh, Shaper Sanctuary, in case we're going up against a heavily interactive deck. Luris is our companion. We got Gadok Teague for anti Tron and Storm and decks with sweepers. And then we got Phyrexian Revoker as a, you know, way to hate out planeswalkers from Tron and, you know, expedition maps and chromatic stars and whatever problematic thing on the board Tron has that we don't want him to crack. And with that, let's go on to the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. Got a game here against Zero Cool 77. Luris, I choose you. We're going to be in the play here with some She Sells Shale Scales. That's a lot of hardened scales, and if I draw a land, it's going to be pretty pretty decent. So I think I'm going to risk because one single land, and and we're we're doing some good stuff with double scales. So I think it's worth.
Stomping grounds. All right, taps. They're not searching for Tom. Yay, I got my land. All right, play Boulder Loft. Get down Hangerback Walker. Here we go. Pathway lands are pretty decent. I really like them. Going up against Jund. Are they dealing with this hanger back walker now before they have a chance to kill it? Or are they playing Kroxa? They are cathartic reunioning. All right. Going up against Dredge. Thank goodness I didn't have a dredger in hand to pair that cathartic reunion. Ooh, shale. All right. Change of plans. I'm playing shale. Oh, but they can conflagrate. I could have like went with the second scales and then ticked up my hanger back walker and made um made it into a 5-5. Five five. Playing Shale here means that next turn I can go Ballista for X's 2 and then put two more counters on it turn it into a 4-4. Four four. And I think that that'll ultimately end up being more effective over the course of the game. They're shocking. I assume they're just going to conflagrate away my board. Never mind. What's this? Stink they're just hard casting a stinkweed. All right. Give me a land, please. Yes. Perfect. All right. Hardened scales number two. Play a walking ballista. Go to combat, hold control. Attack here and here. Activate shale. Shoot down imp. We're getting in for three. They're gonna get to start dredging. Let's see if they can do something nuts. Otherwise, next turn I win just with ballistas alone. Yeah, this deck is so much fun, Kale. Shale, look at, look at Shale, she's a birdie. She's a bird chick. I love birds. But this is, I think, our first time actually getting Anthro Owls. We've had uh, many avians before, but I think they were all like eagles. Eagles and stuff. But we actually got owls, which is amazing. Because that, if it's in with Strixhaven, usually bird, like owls are associated with like wizards and magic. Like they're usually the companions. Owls are usually the wizard companion. They even brought that into MLP, so Twilight's companion is uh, Owl Owlicious. Are they going to light from the loam? They are loaming. Now they're going to conflagrate. Conflagrate for eight and wipe out my whole board. Here it goes. But at least I have another Ballista to follow up with. Now we'll be able to shoot an Archimiba and put them down to six. Actually, can I get lethal on their face here? I can put them down to five. 
And then if I draw land, I can Ballista on X is five. So if I a top deck and untap land, I would win. Wait. So it'd be X is two, three, four because of the hardened scales. No, that, that wouldn't be it. So I will just shoot the Narg Amoeba here. The, the, the deck in there, Kale, is called She Sells Shale Skills. You'll see it. All right, shoot Narc Amoeba. Shoot them. Shoot them and shoot them. So I'm going to end up with two thopters oh wait you know what maybe i should have shot them because i forgot i'm gonna get these thopter tokens so i will be able to... oh yeah i might have screwed up because if i draw an untapped land i would have won because i'm gonna swing them down to four and if i draw an untapped land i'd be able to ballista on x is four no i can still get it if i draw an untapped land but it just yeah yeah it's the same thing nothing's changed Untap land for the win. And it's an untap land. What do you know? What do you know? All right, Ballista. Shoot your face. Shoot your face. Get you to two and attack you for two. Good thing we got three copies of Rip in the board, so that'll be good. But opponent, like opponent, is gonna bring in abrupt decays for rips, but also they might be tempted to just use it on stuff like Hardened Scales, Conclave Mentor, and then my Rip will get to live. So hopefully I can debate them like that. So bring in Gadok Teague, bring in Rip, and that'll be it. So bring in those. Cut Hangerback Walker is not the most exciting in this match. You know what? Actually, animation module is not the most exciting. Let's bring a couple of Hangerbacks back in. And go like that. Let's do it. You have you almost have all the cards for this in paper since you already had a hardened skills deck. Nice. That's awesome. You're not that far off then. And it's definitely a least a, a lesser expensive version than regular hardened scales because um, regular hardened scales has like Arcbound Ravager, which is expensive. Let's mulligan that hand because it doesn't have a rip. That one has a rip. I'll keep it. Let's bottom a land here. I think I'm going to bottom uh, one of the windswept teats. Or do I bottom the pathway? No. We only need one white. We're good. All right, Branch Aloft, Noble, go. Noble Hierarchs are pretty expensive too, I think. I know they got reprinted, but you don't actually need Nobles for this deck if you don't have them. Like it's, you, you can just run 24 lands and cut the four Nobles and run two more things. So you don't need them. Um, and if you wanted to just run like Birds of Paradise, that works too. Thardic, oh, they have a Dredger. What's up, Vulgar? Have you ever eaten and or gotten a... What is that? I have never heard of that. Is that a real place? That sounds like a place in Vegas or something. That sounds like that place in Vegas where they literally treat you bad just as, as like a novelty.
Have you heard of that place though? In Vegas, there's like literally a place where they, where the waiters and stuff, they treat you like garbage. And it's literally that it's just a meme. You go there as a meme and like people would record it and they would like, I don't know, cuss you out or something. Think we'd imp. Good thing we got rip. All right, Luminarch Aspirant is amazing. Fetch here, get a basic planes. Play Conclave Mentor. And do I say yes to this graft? I'm going to say no. Let's play Luminarch Aspirant. I think I'm going to graft my counter onto Stone Coil Serpent. Because the Stone Cold Sermon, I think I'm willing to throw away, but this other stuff is actually valuable. All right, they're doing nothing. We drew a land, play a Conclave Mentor. Do not graft. Play the biggest stone coil we can. And now let's graft the counter. It is a 5-5 five five currently. And when we graft, we are turning it into an 8-8. Eight eight. We go to combat. Put the counter on it. We're turning it into an 11 11. And I guess we're going to get in there for three, see if they'd like to trade. Because it's got trample. Next turn, we'll just alpha, swing everything, and then just like that stone coil will hit him super hard, and I don't care if it dies at that point. Goblin lore, sure. They're desperately looking for that abrupt decay. And they, it looks like they found it. Nope, Bloodgast. Bloodgast cannot block, so I don't care. All right. Oh, don't mind if I do. All right, fire away at the Stinkweed Imp. And I think that be game. Put the counters on Noble, I guess. Could have put it on the Ballista, but I think I can hit for a little bit more putting on Noble here because it can attack. I don't think that changes it really. Walking Ballista, walking Ballista would have made more sense, but whatever. We still got it here. There's nothing they can do to live. Like, if they have a nature's claim, sure, but I don't think they will. All right, they are taking it, and they are exploding. GG. <laughs> Absolutely body dredge. Now, that's why I always say, why the heck do people run less than three copies of Rip in the Grave? That's why I always run four and three is like my minimum, which we're currently running three. Cause it's like when there's a graveyard deck, they are absolutely a graveyard deck. You need the rip, you need it to even win. Like if there's living end, if there's dredge, your only way to beat them is by having the rip. So it's such an important 
such an important sideboard card that you need at least three, but likely four. So that's my advice to you, <laughs> BG. Got a game here against Tarsen Nault, and we're going to be on the play with some She Sells Shale Scales. And uh, we got a shale. I'm going to keep that. That looks great. Um, Modern's going good. How are you doing? Oh, yeah, you already said good. Hello. <laughs> um, yeah, shock here. Go for the scales. Man, this Conclave Mentor is about to be a 9-9. It is going to be massive as your mom. Oh, and the opponent's not heavily interactive. I mean, they're not going to have a lot of cheap early spot removal. I don't think they're going to path shale right away. This is going to be sick. I'm looking forward to next turn if our stuff does not get interacted with here. Just play a wall of omens. Come on, just play a wall. Play a Birth of Melodus. I think Birth of Melodus is a very underplayed card. Taking the one. Are they just going to crack their clue? Squadron Hawk, I don't care. Is this like a Myria control? They're getting two more Hawks, so they had another one in hand. Or are they just filling up their hand? All right, Lana War Reborn. Conclave Mentor. Oh, it's going to be so thick. Yield. Yes, I'll graph that counter. Go to combat. Uh, no swings. Activate. And now our Conclave Mentor is an 8-8. Eight eight, but it probably is just going to get pathed. I don't know why they got just basic planes. They should have snow planes so that people would think that they got um, on the nice. I think it'd be a good little fake out. So I think it'd be, you know, competitively worth it to go run snow planes for their deck. Nice. MTG bot on top of things, banning bots. I never liked MTG bot before, but now that I see that it bans those auto like link spam bots, I think it's great. Um, all right, I think let's just attack with both and grab Luris and play a tap land. They're chumping with Raven Inspector. All right, grab Luris. Pass turn. Please don't have a sweeper. They didn't even crack their clue. What? I mean, they have a million cards in hand, so I, maybe they just didn't need to. Now they're cracking it. Sarah Ascendant. So it's Martyr Proc. All right. Play a canopy, crack it. Play Luris. Pump up the Luris with three one one counters. Go to combat, swing for eight. They're gonna chump block with their hawk probably. Yep. If that Saris ends up getting buffed, I'll just path it. Welcome back, peoples. Welcome back to the stream. Glad to have you here. They are pathing my lures. You know, that's actually not the worst thing. I had nothing to get back, and I do actually need mana right now. So I can effectively, you know, crack these canopies and play things off of them. And also, if I get a animation module, I'll be able to use it efficiently. A ballista would be nuts. All right, that's a noble. Crack the canopy, draw a card. 
Ooh, animation module. Don't mind if I do. Play a noble. Activate shale. Yield here. Make a servo. Go to combat and swing nine. And there's another chump block. At some point, I'm just going to like path the blocker so I can finally start getting in. Because these chump blocking hawks are annoying. <laughs> Miss Vale Plains, so that they got the little hawk combo. I like I don't want to path them either because I don't want the I don't want to ramp them because it looks like they're they're in need of mana at the moment. And I don't want to give them that luxury. I mean, I might just have to try to overwhelm. Ooh, another animation module. Nice. All right, get another basic forest. Play another animation module. Let's use animation module to give another counter to Conclave Mentor. Make some tokens. Activate shale. Sure. Let's pump it up, get another token. See, this deck can use all this mana. It's not like excess mana is dead. If you have an animation module, there's always a use for the mana. They're trading the hawk there and jumping there. That's fine. Like, at what point are they going to wrath us? Like, I'm expecting a wrath. Usually the Martyr Proc deck plays wraths. They even sometimes play main deck ghostly prison, which is weird, but it, it happens. Ghostly prison is a very underrated um, modern sideboard card, I think. Because decks that go wide just can't deal with it. Ranger of Eos is here. At what point am I going to find my Ballista? I want to just one-shot my opponent already. Like, I can path the Sarah Ascendant. They chump the big dude here. They take a bunch. They get two cards. They find double martyr. There's the ballista. Thank you so much, deck. I was looking for this the whole time. All right, so one, two, three, five, six. Make two servos. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's that's good enough. Make a couple servos. Blast our opponent's creatures. And now we can attack for lethal. Get in there. Activate shale. Get a million more counters or whatever. And yeah, that should be that should be game. Yep, that is Xaxi's 21, but I could also just fire off these five damage with Ballista. That was what we were finally getting waiting for. That, that Ballista and it finally got there and just wrecked. The opponent was a little land hungry there. I feel for you. I've been in that position many a time. All right, so against Martyr Proc. What do I want against Martyr Proc? This is going to be a terrifying matchup. I think I want Phyrexian Revoker to name Martyr. Um, and that's probably it. 
Uh, I have a feeling that we're gonna need Gadok Teague. Like they might have um, a Wrath effect they're gonna bring in. Maybe they might have like Entreat the Angels or something. I, I, I don't know, but I'm kind of expecting something scary. You know what, let's not bring it in. Let's just bring in the Phyrexian Revokers. And they have a lot of exile effects, so I think I'm gonna cut Hangerback Walker. It's not gonna make the most use here. Maybe Rip, because they're gonna be like proccing their martyrs, maybe. Back at food, finally. I'm jealous, I want some food. I had a little bit of food in between uh, streams when I streamed for Car Market and then I got off and then I ate like a microwave dinner just because it was quick and easy because I had to stream again for me. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hungry again because it was not that much food. It was like a small portion as microwave dinners usually are. It was a vegetarian lasagna and it was decent. I was too lazy to go microwave it again. I'm, I microwaved it for about six minutes and it was still a little bit cold. But I was just like, I'm chilling now. I'm not going to get up and go rewarm it. Because <laughs> I have I have things to do. I have places to be. And by places to be, I mean at my computer. Because I have to stream here. And then after the stream is over, I have to edit and upload. I have to finish. I, I started last night editing but um, this video. But I have to upload this video for tomorrow for my channel. And then um, I have to start working on editing and uploading another video for Friday. And then if I manage to finish that, which I don't think I will in this amount of time, but if I do and finish that, then I can start working on the rest of the thumbnails that I need to make for next week's videos. So I need to make, I think, two more thumbnails. Two more. And then tomorrow, Wednesday. Oh, no, you know what? No, I have to start brewing a commander deck for tomorrow's commander stream. I might have to just play the same decks, but yeah. Then I have to um, brew up for next week's games. I have to brew some decks. And then Thursday I have to edit for, for uh, my sponsor, Card Market, and give them the video. Yeah, just a lot of stuff to do. And then Friday might finally be my day off, I think, maybe. If all goes according to plan. But I haven't had a day off in like three weeks. I've been working like 12 hours a day every day. I've not been able to catch a break. I haven't played video games in two weeks. Um, all right, this hand looks decent. I can revoke uh, martyrs and uh, get an animation module, start ticking up. And Ballista is quite good. All right, play a branch loft pathway, play a module, pass turn. They did not play anything for one. That's crazy. Because they usually have like Speaker of the Heavens, um, you know, the Thraben Inspector, the uh, Martyr, the Sarah Ascendant, you know, sometimes even Kami of, of, Kami of False Hope. Lots of stuff. I'm just going to play the Revoker immediately. Don't want to mess with any shenanigans. I don't want them to like play and crack a thing underneath us. So Windslept Teeth, crack it, grab a basic plons. This is one of my favorite planes, by the way. I, I'm trying to collect a bunch of these for Commander, and I think I have a, I have a bunch of them, and I use them in my God Eternal Oketra Commander deck. Um... I, I don't remember, I don't recall if I have all all 36 that I need or 40 or whatever, but I might, I'm not sure. I haven't played that deck in a while, so I haven't checked. All right, so Martyr of the, Martyr of Sands. Yeah, I've just been trying to catch up with my schedule 12 in addition to like Strixhaven coming out. There's just so much to do. I. But I'll be able to catch a break. Um, my my uh, estimation is that I'll finally be able to catch a break next week on Friday. Finally be an official day off. Alrighty. Um, I think let's go Conclave Mentor plus play a Stone Coil Serpent. Oh, and then Ballista plus Luminarch Aspirant? That's going to be massive.
It might have actually made more sense to go Luminarch Aspirant there, take up my Revoker swing, and then next turn I just go Conclave Mentor plus Ballista. Yeah, that would have made more sense. So that was a little bit of a misstep on my part. All right, pass turn. That was a suboptimal. But it's all right. Not going to make too much of an impact. I'm just going to lose three damage. Does not swing. They're pathing their own Thraben Inspector. Oh man, this opponent's getting mana screwed. I feel for you, my guy. Been there, done that. Believe me. But I'm gonna get, oh, even a hardened scales. All right, but this is gonna be nice and huge. So get out, good old Luminarch Aspirant. Ballista on X is two. Not activate the module. Go to combat, put two counters on Ballista. Shoot down the bird. Get in there with this many. Oh, they're just gonna cast a sweeper, aren't they? Then I'm gonna be the one that's in need of help. But I do have a Luris to grab, so might not be the end of the world, but. Did I bring in Gadok Teague? I think I did. No, no, I didn't. Is it ghostly prison time? I can still win through a ghostly prison with this ballista. But yeah, this Mar this this Frexian Evoker named Martyr Sands probably has them screwed. <laughs> They're gonna have to hit Ballista here for sure. Yep, alright. Fire it off at their face, and then I'll be able to get it back with Luris too. Beautiful. All right, I'm going to start taking out my Trampler because it's got Trample, obviously. Play Hardened Scales. Oh, I want to play Shale, but I think I'm going to take, um, I'm going to use my mana efficiently here and uh, play um, our Grabbleris. Go to combat, put the counter on the Stone Coil. And get in for a bunch. They're down to one. All right, opponent, you gotta cast your Sweeper here. I'm really expecting a Wrath. I'm really, I really am. If they hit their land. Uh, can I see the chat, please? Please? Did they have a wrath? Oh, they had settle. They had settle the wreckage. All right. They, they did have settle. But yeah, I was going to value the heck out with animation module anyway. So I think we could still do it. Uh, did they have a martyr? No, they didn't even have a martyr. They were planning on just playing the ranger. Yeah, they were clunked up. One of the problems with the uh, martyr yeah, is that you gotta, you gotta keep hitting your land drops because that deck is very mana hungry. Um, that's what, like, the things like, uh, the Thraben Inspector are for, so you can crack clues, maybe hit your lands, but, yeah, without, you know, that deck has a very big potential to be mana screwed. That's why, I, another reason why I prefer Soul Sisters, it can function on less mana. Alright, GG. Got a game here against Digital, Digital Edgelord Damage Edgelord 24, and we are going to be on the play with some She Sells Shale Scales in Modern. And that's keep. Looks good to me. So now I, I gotta learn the proper sequencing with this deck. I think I start on hanger back and then go Luminarch, tick up hanger back, put a counter on hanger back with the, the Luminarch. But also, if, if I was going for aggro, then I think playing the Luminarch first would be more aggressive because I'd be able to swing for four immediately. Yeah, I would be able to swing for four immediately, whereas the hanger back would only swing for three. But against a deck that starts on Bloodstained Mire, I think I'd rather start on the hanger back to get that value going, because they're probably going to end up killing it. So, I guess that makes sense. And they end up bolting that one and said, no, 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 I did not mean to yield. Uh, well, thanks. Accidentally.
skipped turn. All right, well, not much I can do about that. All right, so going up against Jund. I tried to skip through their turn, not mine. All right, we'll hang it back, Walker. We'll start the tick up train going. Hangerback's particularly good against Lily, so if they want to make me sack it, the Thopter will be able to swing back and kill Lily. Even a Wren is fine. They are shocking. Hex Drinker, so they can take it up to Pro Instance, that's fine. All right, play a forest, play a noble, play a luminarch aspirant. I actually meant to take up the hanger back walker there. I didn't mean to do that. It's that's, that's all right. All right, I passed turn. So we're like, despite passing our turn, we're in a pretty decent spot still. We can make a bunch of uh, servo tokens to chump block Hex Drinker forever unless they take it up to Progenitus mode. Overgrown Tomb. But I think I'm actually going to swing with Hanger back next turn because they're at 13 already. I don't think they're a Shadow deck. I don't think a Shadow deck would play um, Basic Forest and Hex Drinker. So I think we'll be good. Oh, it can just go up. For, I thought they had to pay six more mana into it, but apparently not. It's okay if they swing here, because we can race. They are staying back. Alrighty, we'll play a animation module. Windswept Heath. Put a counter on the hangerback walker. Get a servo. And pass turn. A thing might have protect from everything, but it doesn't have reach or flying, so we will be able to get over with our horde of uh, Thopter tokens. I just gotta make sure that I swing with hanger back for six and not seven because i want that i want the hex drinker to block it and kill it i want the, to get the the six thopter tokens they're bolting me why <laughs> are they about to like cycle their hand out like wheel their hand or something Oh, they're because they want to play a scourge. All right, I see. Yay, what's up, Green Robbie? And welcome back, 12. They have one card left. All right, take up Hangerback Walker. Get a servo token. Fetch. Get a temple garden. Ooh, conclave mentor. So like I said, I actually want to swing for six with the hanger back walker. I don't want to swing for more. So... Let's go to combat, put a counter on the hangerback walker, and swing with it. I would like for the opponent to kill it with the hex drinker, please. Please kill it with the hex drinker.
This got him on a rough spot right now. Yes. All right. That's what I wanted. That is what I wanted. Now we get five flyers. Give me my flyers. Unfortunately, we don't have a shale. <laughs> shale would be great after a hangerback walker dies. All right. Crack the canopy. All right, play Conclave Mentor. Pass turn. Looking good. Looking really good. Um, the opponent might have to start swinging back at us with that Hex Drinker. Like, I don't know how much they can stay back anymore. Four mana is like, what, Kroxa, something? I don't know. Are they grabbing their companion? What is, I am assuming Luris, yep. What, what are you playing? <laughs> well, yeah, it looks like we're still dropping no frames, we're good, we're back. Yeah, it's just sometimes the, the internet flickers, goes off randomly out of nowhere. Scur uh, scourge number two, I don't care. I have infinite chump blockers. Oh no, they kill my conclave. I gain two life and I shrink their skirt. That's hilarious. I shrink their scourges down to two twos. All right. Dude, opponent, you have to start swinging. Another hanger back. All right, well, I think I'm going to grab Luris. And uh, play Luris. Um. Might as well play Hangerback Walker for zero. <laughs> I don't know what that'll do, but yeah, I'll just die and make zero Thopters. Go to combat, um, put a counter on a Thopter token. Say no to that trigger. Swing with the flyers. And next turn we should have lethal. For the opponent is basically team or battle rage or bust. They have zero cards in hand. They have a Luris to grab, but yeah, they have one card left to kill us. What's it gonna be? Bolts Luris, fine. Then we win. We just literally use Luminarch, put a counter on a Thopter, and get him for lethal in the air. So even through accidentally skipping my my second my second turn, we still got there. So apparently it didn't matter. Our opponent got punished with karma for not passing it back to us for a little moto misclick. That was pure karma. Usually when my opponent accidentally skips their turn, I will also purposefully skip my turn just so we can even it up and make it fair. But yeah, they didn't do that. They took advantage of it. And so they karma bit them back. All right, um, we're going up against Jund, Scourge of the Skyclaves. Maybe I want Rip for Goyf and their Luris. Maybe uh, Shaper Sanctuary seems good. Let's bring that in. Um, I like Animation Module for all the chum blockage. I like my pads. I like everything. I like everything. You know, maybe I don't like Ballista here, as crazy as that sounds. Ballista's usually a, just universally a good card and everything, but 
like doesn't shoot down their guys because their guys are fat and um i think i like everything else i got even more than ballista here all right it's weird but i'm cutting it i wouldn't mind rip but i don't think i have any room for it here hey mike the mailman welcome back What is happening to my activity feed? My my Twitch feed is not coming up here. All right, I had to reset it. There we go. It's reset now. That is fine. I'm not going to mulligan against the Thoughtseize deck, so I just got to keep as many as I can. Um, we're going to get Thoughtseize. Probably they're, they're going to take our path and then push our mentor, but... I'll be able to grab Luris and maybe get the mentor back. Like I play modern enough to know they're gonna thought seize my path and bolt my mentor. All right, never, never mind. Maybe not. I'm kind of tempted to actually path that here. I'm kind of tempted to, not gonna lie. I think... I think I will. I think I will. Because they might... Thoughtsy... Okay, you know what? Change of plans. Let's throw out scales. We'll path next turn if we have to, like if they start ticking up. But I'm just expecting them to throw out a goif here or whatever. Fetches. Okay, there it is. There goes Path, so they're going to be able to get a Progenitus again. And it's going to be hard to beat that without a Hanger Back Walker like last time. Gets him for two, we'll take it. They shocked though, so what, what for? For Scourge purposes? I don't think it's a Shadow deck, I really don't think it's Shadow. Oh, hey, would you look at that? The good old thought sees bug. Don't mind if I do. All right, I'll happily pass that. Hex Drinker is so good. So, so good. Doesn't see enough play. I might want to try that card in Mono Green Devotion sometime. Because I've always, like, played it in Monogreen Stompy, but I never thought about playing it in Devotion, but... In Devotion, you can make lots of mana and level it up really quick. Yep. Alright, use that third counter, come on. Yee! <laughs> Get rid of that. Thoughts he's bug, boy. All right, um, I think let's go Llanowar Reborn, Conclave Mentor, graph the counter, get um, three counters on this, make it a 5-5. Five five. Uh no, it wasn't it wasn't your Wi-Fi, it wasn't Twitch, it was just probably my my internet. Probably the router screwed up for a second. Alright, I'm just gonna get Luris here so I can try to get back that conclave mentor in the next turn. They're grabbing their Luris. Alright, I'll grab mine.
animation module. All right, let's play a boulder loft pathway. Play animation module. Grabbleris. Don't thought seize me, opponent, please. They're playing their Luris. They have nothing to get back, though. Don't touch my cards. All right, just pass it. Come on, just pass the turn. They still got three cards in hand, though. What could those be? More lands? Maybe they're flooded? They do seem to have a lot of mana, but I did path them. But they still haven't missed the land drop. I'm expecting they have one more land and probably like maybe one or two more removal spells because they didn't play any creatures. Oh, oh, I think I'm still just going to go Luris into Conclave Mentor here. It's the value play. Because they have nothing to recur with Luris right now, so I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, there's the removal spell. Dismember. All right, here we go. No, dude, stop. <laughs> All right, they hit me for three. Now I'm going to blast their Luris. Hang back, Walker. All right. Luris for X is three. Yield here. Make a servo. Shoot Luris. Shoot Luris. Play Temple Garden tapped and go. All right, not bad. And now we got the good old hanger back plus animation module combination to just value out and make servos every turn. So that's good. I can even just make servos every turn by taking up my hanger back, my uh, walking ballista, which actually taking up walking ballista here might be the play over playing the hanger back because like it'll actually end the game really quick. I'll get two counters every time I take it up because of hardened scales. They're fetching. They have one card left. It's a shadow. So they are shadow. Dude, I can kill that. I can literally kill that. Yeah, they're probably going to scoop the second I shoot it. Yeah, they scoop now. <laughs> All right, we demolished shadow. That was sick. That was a good game. Looks like we do have lots of value game again, shadow. Our guys can be kind of resilient, and Luris definitely helped out a lot. So GG. Got a game here against... Corky Plunger, and we are going to be on the play with Green White. She sells, she sells shale scales, and I'm gonna keep that. That looks great. So um, we can get a three-three Stone Coil Serpent on the second turn, which is not bad. Actually, it's gonna be bigger than that. It's gonna be much bigger. Ooh, and they ain't gonna kill my stuff. Sweet. Our Ralph. So we're going up against a combo. So walking ballista is gonna be great here against the Heliod combo. Hanger. Okay, raise verge. Okay, just play Land or Reborn. Play Harden Scales, and play a big O Stone Coil Serpent. Grab the counter onto it. Make it a four four. All right, pass turn, and then we'll just grab Luris next turn, or we can crack a canopy, our choice. They have the Utopia Sprawl. They're stuck on one, so if I can find a hanger back walker, or uh, walking ballista, the better. They're untapping. Dude, why didn't you do that first and put a like a Utopia on a basic force? I understand, like people don't understand how to play 
our Ralph Utopia sprawl, a lot of the time I've noticed, like, not many people play it correctly. Just because the Heliod combo deck is like meta now, so a lot of newer players are getting into it, and I just see everybody playing their Utopia sprawls wrong. Like, literally put it on your basic, because if I have a field of ruin, that thing's dead. Like, and you're supposed to like play, the, you had more mana if you would have just played the land, put it on there first. You would have more mana to work with, but I guess they still accomplished what they wanted to do, so I can't argue with that. All right, Razor Verge Sprocket, um, grab Luris. Go to combat, get in there for five. And watch as we die. They're just gonna tap the uh, the Temple Garden to play um, Ranger Captain of Eos, grab a Ballista, and do the thing. Wow, they have Utopia Sprout Tron. <laughs> Coco. Man, that was a nutty draw from the opponent. Super nutty. Oh, they hit Ranger and Scourge of the Skyclave Apparition. Yeah, I'm going to scoop. It is over. It is super over. The opponent got a super nutty draw there. All right, so we want Revoker to name their Ballista and their Spike Feeder and whatnot. Uh... Gadok Teague to stop Coco. And I guess that's it. So animation module, this isn't the matchup for it. It's not a value matchup. It's just a win quickly matchup. Um, and I'm not a big fan of hanger back walker here. All right, let's go like that. All right, we plan first. That's a Ballista with the Hardened Scales effect, so I will keep it. Unfortunately, it's the wrong Hardened Scales effect. We can even stop Coco's too, so that's great. All right, they'd be cracking their land, getting the Temple Garden, and Utopia's Brawl, sure. Get out Conclave Mentor. Rise and Canopy. Okay, I'm going to have to play Teague here to prevent Coco. Aria Champion. That does nothing here, so that's fine. I can even shoot it if I want. Let's get in for two. Braxton Revoker to name their combo pieces as well. Not gonna pretend like I have anything. I think I'll just fetch her to F6. All right, you're go. Play more stuff than my ballista can eat. That'd be very kind of you. Oh no, they're gonna eat my Gadok Teague. Yep, there it goes. Well, I really want a Revoker on Spike Feeder here because they could Coco into Heliod plus Spike Feeder. But I think I'm going to get greedy and just go with the Hanger Back or a Walking Ballista on Exus 3. Shoot down Skyclave Apparition and get in.
Get a 2 2 token. And swing in for two. All right, pass turn. I don't think I'm just going to throw away my Ballista to kill an Ariok, because I don't care about the Ariok. It doesn't really do anything against our deck. Like, they're gaining some life. Sure, they're probably going to gain, like, 10 life off of that thing, but it's not actually doing much. It's just delaying the inevitable. Heliod. I could also revoke her on Heliod so they can't give the Ballista life link, but it doesn't stop the Spike Feeder. All right, I got a land, sweet. Let's fetch. Get a basic forest. And go to combat. Begin with the illusion and the mentor. I wanted to bluff with the ballista, but I don't think I'm gonna because I think they might take the bait. I'm not really expect. What do I name with this revoker? It's a 50 50 because like. I feel like I should name spike feeder. Oh, man, I don't know. I have a big feeling they have Spike Feeder, but then again, if they had Spike Feeder, would they have actually played it there instead of Heliod? Because it actually is a blocker. Probably. But if I name Ballista, might as well just name Heliod, right? Because then they won't be able to give the Ballista lifelink. I have no clue. I don't know what to name. Okay, it's already in the stack, so Ballista's not the name. Oh man. It's it's really just a 50-50 here. I'm gonna go Heliod because Ballista has, there's more ways for them to get a Ballista. Alright, I'm gonna shoot this thing before it gets big. Alright, let's play the biggest stone coil we can. 4-4. Four, four. I gave them an unnecessary life. I didn't think that I, I forgot that Heliod trigger was gonna happen. All right, pass turn. We got a lot of damage on board. Um, don't, don't, just don't hit the spike feeder, man. Thank goodness. All right, we're alive. They're hitting our revoker. So when they play their their ranger. To go find their ballista, they can use the Heliod. All right, Canopy. Let's play the biggest. I, I wanted to crack Canopy, but I'm just going to play the biggest hanger back I can and then just smash in with everything, even the Conclave Mentor. At this point, I'm just relentlessly swinging, trying to kill them before they can find a combo piece. So get in with all. Hey, Adesso. Yeah, our viewer count just is non-existent right now because the stream lagged out. And usually when a stream lags out, everybody assumes the stream's over. No, it lagged out. Just chill out for a second. It'll be back. Um, and they're, yeah, they found it. They found it off the top because they would have played it last turn. So very nice top deck right when we were about to win. That's such a shame. We had it right there and they top decked it. All right. Well, GG. They revealed their hand.
So they, the ballista was underway, but we would have been able to like win next turn, I think, regardless. They would be forced to like jump. And then they wouldn't have enough to like play and activate. You know, maybe they could like, if they block this and this. No, because this got trample. So yeah, I think they would have had to block with Arbor Elf and Chump. So yeah, it looks like we had it if they didn't top deck this. So lucky opponent. GG. Got a game here against Celio34. We are going to be on the draw with some green white she sells shale scales. And this looks good. I'm gonna keep that. Seems sweet. Celio34. That Celio is a is a is a Dece Pokemon. I've never used Eviolite Celio, but Eviolite Celio's gotta be pretty decent because you know. Walrein is very fat, so I imagine the Celio stats aren't aren't bad. I would imagine they're not bad. Oh, we got a sub already. Uh, we got Jay the Furry. Thank you so much for the six month Prime sub. Welcome back. That's half a year, dude. That's amazing. I appreciate the support and enjoy the emotes yet again. And I'm sorry if if my imposter on on Steam tried to scam you. Um, it's good that dilemma's over and I got my account back. Hopefully, in the next week or so, I'll be able to edit my picture and name on Steam again to make it back to normal. Idolon, uh oh, this is gonna be spooky. All right, I'm going to go for Conclave Mentor here so that next time I can try to bit, play a 2-2 Ballista to, like, shoot down the Eidolon. Or, you know what? Let's go hang her back Walker, actually. Because next turn I'll be able to block and take it up. I haven't been able to play much though, but I plan on getting on Destiny again today because, you know, weekly, weekly reset. I have to do the Inside Tournament as Grandmaster to go for my uh, Gilded Gilded Conqueror title. And also, um, the Guardian Games is here. I need to get my loot. Gotta get that fresh loot. Rift Bolt suspended. And another Rift Bolt suspended. Yikes. All right. Well, let's play. Um, let's go Windswept Heath and pass. And I'll just try to block this Eidolon if possible. We're in danger though, but these these rift bolts are dealing six to us. We're going to nine, which is not the worst. We're gonna fetch down to eight here. I feel like this deck wants a second planes, right? No, maybe not. They're gonna take some self pain from these rift bolts hitting our face. I gotta put some pressure on though, cause like I'm just sitting here. Oh wait, I'm stupid. I meant to play the animation module. What was I thinking? <laughs> I might have gotten distracted, <laughs> but I was going to play the animation module. That was the whole plan. Like the whole plan here was to um animation module fetch make a servo. Like that's what I was going to do. Oh, are they giving me Eidolon? If they give me Eidolon here, then I have a good shot. All right, looks good to me. And I'm at a decently healthy seven here, which is not bad. I'm never going to use that horizon canopy, though. All right. Um, I think we can go Lanawar Reborn, Conclave Mentor. And, 
I'm gonna say no here. Yeah, I'm gonna say no because I'm gonna put it on my ballista next turn. Play an animation module. Go to combat and attack with one Thopter. You know what? No, let's let's stay back to be safe because like if they go land Searing Blaze and kill the Conclave Mentor. Actually, no, that's fine. I was I don't know what I was thinking. I should have swung for one. My brain is fried. After my break, I just came back from uh, streaming from Card Market and uh, getting back to the swing of it after taking an hour break to eat and watch videos. This is the first game queued up. Alrighty, let's go for a Ballista. And I will graph the counter. I'm not going to pay a life with Horizon Canopy here. I don't want to get put into double bolt range. Um... I'm going to say yes here, and I'm going to say no to these. Get a 2-2 two -two Ballista. Now let's attempt to shoot down the Swift Spear. And next turn we'll have lethal. So let's get in there for four. The next turn we can swing for eight and then use our ballistas to finish them off. So hopefully they just have nothing here. Don't have a Boros Charm, please. Oh no, just be a Helix. No, it's a Boros Charm. No, anything but a Boros Charm, man. Anything but a Boros Charm, come on. Oh, they, they're going to have it. They're going to have it. There's no way they don't. They didn't play a land. They're, they don't have a land. We know it's spell. They have spells. What if they're three drops like Skewer? Goblin guys, I don't care. I still got lethal. They're staying back. All right, perfect. Play a Razor Verge Thicket. Take up our Ballista. I'm going to say yes to this trigger because two is no different. What if they have the random Burst Lightning? I'm going to still say no. The world's most random Burst Lightning. But yeah, we can just shoot this, this Goblin Guide down and get in. And we got it. I played that one super suboptimally, but still got there. Hashtag still finished. All right, shoot. Watch them sandbag a bolt. <laughs> nope, no sandbagged bolt. All right, cool. On to sideboarding. What's up, system? Hey, Juno. How y'all's is doing today's? All right, so against Burn, give me Core Firewalker. And Shaper Sanctuary ain't bad, but not for this matchup. Um, so yeah, Core Firewalker, and I think... You know, despite Ballista doing work there, I'm not a big fan of Ballista in this match. Hmm... I don't know if I even want Shale here. You know what? Let's cut one Shale, one Ballista. The Hangerback can be a good blocker, but I'd have to wait a turn on it. All right, let's just go like that. Screw it. I'm actually not a big fan of animation module here. Oh, too late. Managed to go shopping today and tested negative for COVID. Congrats. Congrats. All right, there's Shale, there's Hardened Scales. I'm going to keep this. Seems good. There's a Boglin guide. They didn't swing. Oh, that's a core Firewalker. All right. Pass and leave up a path. Prevent every bit of damage we can.
All right, Goblin Guide reveals a Conclave Mentor. All right, pat this. Enjoy your free mana. Don't play an Eidolon, please, and thank you. Suspense Ripple, that's not it. All right, this is good. I am very excited for this Firewalker. Hope they didn't bring in a, hope they didn't bring in a path or a Pyrite spell bomb. All right, play Boulderloft Pathway, play Core Firewalker, and it is time. If the Burn deck cannot remove the Firewalker, like if they didn't bring in path, then it's basically impossible to beat. Just a singleton two drop, just just a single two drop will single handedly. Completely take down burn if you don't kill it. Sounds like a good day, Juno. I haven't been able to go out in a while because, like, I since I just moved, I don't have a car over here yet, so I can't go anywhere really. I almost said no to that trigger. We're down to 12. And we're down to 10. All right, they got two cards left and we're at 10 and stemming the bleeding from any future spells. Seems good to me. Oh, that's a Luminarch Aspirant. All right, get a basic forest, play hardened scales. Get down shale. I'm going to stay back here. I don't want them to have a hasty dude to hit me with. Just might as well stay safe. Oh, that's a Stone Coil Serpent. Don't mind if I do. Stone Coil Serpent for X as well. Oh, I forgot to play the Conclave Mentor first. No. They're going to Helix on Shale. Rip. Well... You know what? I'm gonna commit to my stupidity and play Luminarch Aspire instead of Conclave Mentor. I already committed to the I forgot to play a Conclave Mentor plan, so I'm just gonna stick through with it. Alright, put a counter on Core Firewalker. And uh, let's get in there for four. All right, your go. See, look how good Shale would have been there. I would have put two counters on each of those creatures. And they scoop it up. <laughs> yeah, they're not beating Core Firewalker. GG, taking down Burn. Got a game here against Bowling Man 79. We're gonna be on the play with some She Sells Shale Scales. And that is going to be a keep. That looks really nice. Uh, I think we start on Luminarch Aspirant, and then we go Conclave Mentor, and then we go with like Ballista and start shoot um ticking up a ballista. Yeah, I think that makes sense. This Conclave Mentor, Luminarch Aspiring is the one that immediately starts getting value, so that one obviously we throw out quicker. And then we want to double that value immediately, so put out that, and then we want to pay off. So I think that's the turn progression. Correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, make it even better. Yes. This is epic. Sea Chrome Coast, so is it like humans? And they didn't have a one drop? There, oh, it's living end. All right, I'm gonna need my uh, I need my sideboard cards. We're likely dead here though, but we can bop face really quickly. So if the opponent manages to dodge ardently, just like not find it, then we should win by like turn four. Because with this hardened scales, we are hitting hard, and we even drew another mentor. I play hardened scales.
What do they got? Swamp. You ready main deck swan song? My guy? Play a Conclave Mentor. Go to combat, put a counter on Luminarch Aspirant. Get in there for four. All right, do we have lethal next turn? Next turn we can swing for 11, put them to one. No, they're dead. Yeah, now that they cycled another street, right, they're gonna die. So they have to Arden plea right now. As for Told and Livian. Yep. Well, we die. So we need our sideboard. They have um, main deck Swan Song, so we know they're gonna be able to counter rip. Uh, so that's a problem. So we can initially counter, like stop the living end after the as foretold by playing Deafening Silence. That would save us one turn though, it's not enough. Rexing Revoker, if you name as foretold, I don't think it stops it from allowing you to cast free spells. I think that has nothing to do with it. Uh, so yeah, I think it's just the rips and we cut the animation modules because we're not really grinding here. And run it like that. It's a super thick nut. It is. You've seen two scales decks in the past two weeks. Were they playing Shale? Because if they weren't, then they were making a mistake. But usually Hardened Scales is the Arcbound Ravager version, but this version is surprisingly working out just as good. If not better. All right, Luris, I choose you. That looks Gucci. Gucci is flames. It doesn't have a rip though, so maybe I should have aggressively mulligan for the rip. Not sure. Like I always say, Living End is one of those just I win decks. It's it's one of those just like, like haha, gotcha. You're not going to do anything about this deck. So it's one of those where you can just take to any like LGS, like any local tournament, and just like do good with. Like you're going to go positive because like. Just the concept of it is kind of busted. All right, let's get that hanger back walker down and start doubling its counters. Like if you want to do, if you want to consistently do good in, in tournaments, you play living end or boggles to a degree. Blood moon decks are fine too, um, but there, there can be problems with those. It's all RNG with Blood Moon, but yeah, living in in Boggles, you'll consistently do well. And even Burn. Burn too. Alright, let's take up our Hanger Back Walker. Play a Ballista and pass a turn. I'm just gonna F6. I know I'm not gonna end up using my Ballista here. Remand. It was Golgari Scale, so they use Whining Constrictor. I played Abzan Scales before. I played both Whining Constrictor and Conclave Mentor. I think it was a little bit overkill. I think you only need one or the other. Because then, like, you get to the point in the game where you're actually not even playing counter stuff. You're just playing counter doublers, and you really don't have anything with counters. I think it'd be pretty good with Endless One. All right, let's actually start swinging now. Oh, you know what? I actually wanted to play Canopy there so I can crack it and look for an emergency rest in peace, but we know that the opponent's just going to combo off here. So we're just going to accept our fate, basically. We're going to excite Curator of Mysteries. Why they do that off a of Glacial Fortress, I do not know, but let's toss out a big Ballista for X is 3. And if we manage to untap with it, then cool, we probably win. Uh, win Caller Avon, they're going to give flying to our Hangerback Walker. So we can tick up our Ballista to put two counters on it, swing for uh, nine, and then fire off the five counters and kill them. So yeah, we got lethal. The opponent's going to have to go for it here. And if they have it, they have it. If not, then cool, we win. But yeah, like I said, Living End's just one of those, yeah, you're not going to beat this deck. <laughs> Let's see if they say, yeah, you're not going to beat this. 
They are not saying, yeah, you're not going to beat this. All right, cool. Go to combat, attack for lethal. Do they have... Do they have their, their uh, settle the wreckage? Let's see. Four mana, commit to memory. Cryptic command. Well, fire away two counters at him. We made an attempt. That delayed us a couple turns, though, now. They have plenty of time to find their, uh, their stuff now. Pass turn. Cycling down to six. They did nothing. All right, go to combat. Attempt to attack them for four. Come on, connect it. Connect. They have a full grip of seven. There's no way you have nothing, dude. There's no way you have nothing. You have seven cards in hand. You got a crypto command this. You have to. You have to counter this. Dude, how, how do you, you have seven cards in hand. How do you have nothing? How, why, why couldn't you just like cycle one more thing for one blue and look for a cryptic command? Like how did, I don't under, I don't get it, but it's, it's a win. We'll take it. All right. Uh, submit it right back and maybe hopefully this time we get ripping our opener. Yeah. Like not only do they not have their combo by now. But they also just didn't want to cycle looking for another answer, and they just ha had no answer with the seven card hand. Yeah, my mind's blown too. <sighs> no rip. Okay, um... Do I want to mulligan looking for a rip? Because this is a fine hand. This is a very fine hand. But thinking about the fact that we're going to get swept, I don't think I can play this. I think I'm going to mull for rip. That doesn't have rip either. But it's, it's so good. It's so good. Do I really want to go down to five? So this hand I go like noble into scales plus shale and then stone quill tick it up and it's huge. It is absolutely huge. Um, this is like the nuts shale hand, but I don't think I can. Yeah, like I'm going to get living ended. There's no way our opponent's going to have that horrible of luck again. I'm just not buying it. Our opponent's definitely going to have better luck. Let me check the game log. Is our opponent mulliganing? They're keeping their seven. I'm gonna mulligan. Okay. Keep that. Toss away a path away. Toss away. Oh, no, no. Undo. Undo. Toss away our paths. They're shocking. All right, this looks like it's shape shaping up to be a fine five card hand. I should have taken I should have taken out the paths. Honestly, I didn't remember. All right, opponent, please do not hold up a remand or anything like that. They're gonna. Oh, they didn't even hit their land. They didn't even hit their land. Oh, come on, don't have a, please don't have a swan song, please, 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 please don't have a swan song. Please, I'm mulligan specifically for this. 
No. Dang it. I mold specifically for it. But they're mana screwed. I have an opportunity. See, look, with them being mana screwed, imagine. Imagine if I hit my, if I kept my first or my second hand, the nuts shell keep. Oh, well, they're cycling like crazy, and they did find their land. Please give me another rip. All right, play a noble. Play Conclave Mentor. Get in there for three, and next turn we'll crack a canopy looking for an emergency rip. Is it time for a living end? They had a full, like, they, they whiffed their land. We know they have pure gasoline. Yeah, there's the as foretold, and there's a living end. And I have one path, it's not enough. They have hexproofers, it's, it's over. Yeah, they, they did, in fact, in the end, say, ha ha, you can't beat this, I got you. Like, that's what living end says in a nutshell. Um, yeah, unfortunate. They had the swan song. Looks like we weren't getting another rip for a while. Close game though, GG. Hello everybody and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. As you know, we like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games unsped up, unedited, and uncut from the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD there from last Monday. Or you can come out on a future Monday if you want to catch the gameplay live before the people on YouTube get to see it. Or you can even play against me if you would like. I welcome that as well. Now we are speeding up the next two games or the next two rounds today. This first one, we are going up against eight rack longest game in the video. And if you know me, you know that I hate hand disruption and I hate eight rack. It is one of the worst things in modern to go up against, but I wasn't actually super upset with this round. Like game number one, we value out with animation module and not all eight rack that play bridge. So we're kind of just able to overwhelm them and they can't do anything about it. So that went pretty well. Going on to game number two, um, it, we got a pretty nice looking opener and I get down shale and then I get down double hardened scales, follow up and like triple the counters of my next creature that enters. I have two huge fat fatties ready to win the game. All I need is the opponent not to remove them. And what do they do? Check this out. They have, what is this? Blood Chief's Thirst into Feed the Swarm. And they kill both of my fat fatties. Like they were as fat as your mom. They are ready to get in there and crush. But no, the opponent had double removal already. And they overwhelm with Pack Rat. Now, that's why I'm not really upset at this 8 rack advantage. Is because they killed us with Pack Rat. It caught me off guard with the Mutaval activation. Pumping their rats. Kind of eating my board. And I know I've played eight rack on the channel like three times before. I played pack rat on the board. I know how it go. Pack rat is a very sweet card. I don't know why they brought it in because you know it could easily die to a ballista. But you know they did they they did them, and um, you know they committed to the pack rat and it worked. You know the next game I get down all these hardened skills effects, but I just do not have anything to use with them. Like I did not have any counters. Like, I need to draw something that can produce counters. And uh, it was kind of upsetting that now they had the rack and the streaking affliction online. I was kind of hoping to just die to rats. And I I'm, I mean, the rats did most of the heavy lifting, so at least I didn't die completely to the rack effect. So that's not super annoying, so I'm not ups super upset with that eight rack matchup. So GG to them. I'm glad that we died in the way we did. So now we're going on to the last game in the video, and this one was against some kind of is it Sprite Dragon Delver deck, which is pretty interesting because Sprite Dragon Blitz and Delver are two very different things. I see how they can work together. They're both spell-based decks, but they're two very different things. Blitz and Delver, they play almost similar, but not quite. So it's kind of um, weirded out to see both of those together. Um, we smash game number one really quick. You know, we kill their Delver with their walking ballista and their Sprite Dragon with their walking ballista. At that point, that was way too much value for them to deal with. Game number two, I bring in a couple copies of Shaper Sanctuary because I'm expecting them to like bolt, vapor snag, maybe dismember, and burst lightning our guys like crazy. 
So I wanted to break in the shape of sanctuary. I didn't draw it though. Um, but yeah, I have a hanger back walker, which isn't particularly good here because I needed to die to block these sprite dragons. And since I don't have a ballista in hand, these sprite dragons just fly over top of us and there's nothing that I can really do about it. Like I'm not about to race that. Like I could have raced it if I drew a hardened scales because I did have double um, Luminarch Aspirant. So if I can double up those counters with the hardened scales, it's gonna match up to the speed of their sprite dragons. But I didn't draw it, it was too late when I drew it. And the ballista I drew at the end of the game when I was out of mana and they are able to get us. Um, game number three though, it goes, kind of a little bit better i do get the um you know the graft land which i'm trying to get a white source first like i'm i'm really just keeping this hand praying for a white source so that i can get down this conclave mentor i wanted to get down the shale on curve but i i like this hand a lot because it had the triple um stone cold serpents and the opponent did not realize that the stone cold serpents did indeed have um reach so i blocked their delver they were surprised and they bolted it so I got a free block there and I have triple stone coil. So it's going to be really annoying to this Delver. And I got my white source, but I was still color screwed. I needed more white. I needed, I needed another land too. I really needed another land. I just needed to get this down. I needed to deploy my stuff, pat their guy, get down my white creature. And I like, I could do a lot of awesome stuff, but unfortunately a little bit of mana screw goes a long way and they end up taking us down. So it's a shame. I don't like to keep mana screw games and videos, but it is what it is. And with that, let's go on to the wrap up. All right, let's talk about some green, white shale, Dean of Radiance. She sells shale scales, which I know I messed up more than a few times. So I, love this card for modern I, it, it was great every time we played it on the second turn it felt great it just felt like we were gonna win it just felt like if we got to end tower that we were gonna win like if you pair it with the hardened scales effect of course it's gonna feel like you're gonna win but without a hardened scales effect it's not even bad if you just like Pair it with the ballista or a walker or a stone coil or anything because like it can still swing because like there were some times like along with noble the shale would get him for two vigilance in the air and then tap some book counters on your guys that just entered it was also really awesome alongside animation module to like when you start making those servo tokens and proliferating that counter with that ability and playing new stuff and making more servos you would just pump up even more stuff and uh and make your servo tokens even better so it, it's kind of like just as good as a steel overseer like it at least it felt that way it felt just as good as it but you know the steel overseer doesn't need it, like it can hit stuff that's already in the battlefield it doesn't have to be you know stuff that is uh just entered so steel overseer is obviously better but it only hits artifact creatures where is this thing we're able to use it for like conclave mentors luminarch noble and I guess that's it. So I guess it is a little bit more narrow, but it worked. Hey, I can't complain. It worked. It's is it a late game top deck? Is it a bad late game top deck? Probably, yeah. Um, it can still do something, especially if you have an animation module out. It can still do something late game, but it's it's not the greatest late. So it's it's up to you. You can even put it in the typical steel overseer shell, like maybe. Maybe you want to put Path in the board and cut Noble and then instead just run like Ozolith and Arcbound Ravager and Arcbound Worker. And then you're just playing, you know, typical hardened skills. I could see that working as well. Nothing says that you have to be in, in a deck in a shell like this. So yeah, I think it's it's worth your time to try out. Although I don't know where you would find the room for it, because I know even the in the regular hardened skills deck, they can only afford to play two Luminarch Aspirants because they don't have the room to play all four. So it's going to be difficult to find the room to try Shale, but she's worth it. But even I've seen those decks not even find the room for Steel Overseer. So <laughs> I don't know. It's going to be it's going to be difficult to slaughter into the. Um, a, a, you know, a competitive version of hardened skills that you try to take to a GP or whatever, or, you know, a big high level tournament. But a version like this ain't bad. I didn't really see anything about the deck I disliked. I don't see anything about this 60 main deck that I dislike. I don't even see anything about the sideboard I dislike. The 75 in general feels pretty solid to me. And there's not a whole lot I would change. I would probably put a second basic planes, but that's about it. Um, so yeah, I enjoyed it. Try it out. It's gonna do it for this one. 
Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below. It's totally free and really helps out the channel. But if you wanted to go the extra mile, you can check out our Patreon link down below in the description. Patreon is a platform where you can help to financially support the content creators you love. And a big shout out to all of our current Patreon supporters whose names are on screen right now, and an extra special shout out to our top supporters for the month. And another way to support the channel is by supporting our sponsors, TCG Player and Mana Traders. If you want to play some Magic Online, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code that's on screen right now to save 15%, and you can rent and play all the Magic decks you want. It is what I personally use and how I had filmed this video here today. And if you want to pick up some magic cards or anything magic related really, you can pick them up through our deck list link down below. That's our tcgplayer.com link and anything you purchase through there really ups out the channel. They are the best of the best on the internet when it comes to Magic the Gathering singles, sealed product, and accessories. And would you like a fully customizable playmat and card sleeves using an art of your own? Check out yourplaymat.com using the code MARIN10YP to save 10% link down below. And that's about it. Again, thank you so much for watching the video and I'll catch you in the next one.